Hey guys, in this video I cover functional interfaces and I go over four main steps. The first one is what is a functional interface? Step two, I demonstrate how to implement a functional interface with a named class. Step three, I demonstrate how to implement it with an anonymous class. And finally, I show how to implement it with a Lambda expression. Let's start out by defining an interface named task. And this task has a single method named execute. So any class that implements this task will provide an implementation for the execute method. Now, let's go to the first step here, first point. What is a functional interface? Essentially, a functional interface is just an interface with a single function. And in other languages, uh, they provide, for example, function pointers or delegates. This is really what it is. It allows us to pass functions around in our program. And these functions are read in an interface. So not any interface is a functional interface. The really the main point is that a functional interface has a single method. Now let's start out by uh, with a second step. Let's implement this. So we have a named class here, and I call this class readbook, and we implement this task. We override the execute method. And all I do is I output a message that I'm reading a book. So this task is reading a book. Now I use the same task, reading a book, but I move on to the third point. So this is the second one. Now let's do use it an anonymous class. So I call here task. The task is read a book. I just use my variable for that. I, I named the variable read book call the constructor, and then I provide an implementation for it. So here I override the execute method, and I provide a simple message reading a book. This is now done with an anonymous class. Um, what I did here is I provided an implementation, and I directly instantiate the class with an object uh, and the variable that refers to object I named readbook. Um, in the second step here, all I have is a class definition. I didn't yet create an object of that class. And the third part is, and this I can only do with functional interfaces, step two and three, I can do with any interface really. But step four is using a Lambda expression. So again, I have task, read book, I call this L for Lambda. And now I do open close parentheses and system out and print line, reading a book. So what I did here is essentially just defining the method implementation. The open close parentheses is short for the parameter list. So here I have open close parentheses for the execute methods. It doesn't have any parameters, so it will be empty. And then the arrow points to the body of the uh, to, uh, of the method that I'm implementing. <clears throat> I could also put here the body and parentheses. I would need a semicolon after the statement. So this is good if I have multiple statements. I could break this down and uh, define the entire body here with, if there are loops, if there are any other statements, if this is longer than a single statement, I can define a body. Um, if I don't have this, like in this case, if it's a single statement, I can just write that statement without the semicolon. And last thing is what happens if I have parameters. So if I had int a, 
and B and maybe others. I could just name them here with just the names. Let's say A and B, for example. Um, <clears throat> note also that I don't specify the types here. I just provide the identifiers of the parameters, but no types are defined. And this is using a lambda expression. So this is the nice thing about functional interfaces. A lot of times um, it's convenient just to define the method. I don't need to define the entire uh, class around the method because a functional interface really cares most about the function or the method that's contained in the interface. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.